I'm gonna rock you through the basics of designing a loop antenna. Um, in near field communications, the way that uh, a tag and a reader are able to exchange data is through an inductive coupling. So for instance, a passive tag like this with a, a coil inlay underneath it is able to couple with an antenna that's roughly its same dimension. So if it's much larger, like in this case, the, the actual antenna size is not able to transmit as much energy to the tag as if they're roughly the same size. Something like that. Um, and again, the geometries and uh, the actual uh, real estate of the tag if it matches the antenna more closely, then you find by way of measuring, measuring equipment that uh, the effectiveness of the read is, is maximized. So we're gonna talk a little bit about those concepts and, and that way uh, give our viewers a little bit more insight into how all of this stuff works. What I have here is uh, an array of different NFC antennas, as well as NFC tags. Um, I've chosen from the most complicated uh, set of tags. Um, for instance, this one's the NFC ring. Um, you know, not only does it have a very small tag inlay, but it also is surrounded by metal, which serves to desensitize uh, the effectiveness of the tag. And finally, it suffers from this curvature, which also uh, limits the amount of surface area between the antenna and the tag as they were to encounter each other. If they were all on the same plane, then uh, you get maximum surface area, but because the ring is curved a little bit, uh, you're ultimately shrinking that surface area. So. Um, these rings exhibit, uh, some, some of those issues. Um, this one, uh, this design is flat. Um, and you can see the, the inlay, uh, buried into this, uh, acrylic type material. Um, but it is still, you know, metal. So we have the desensitizing factor. Um, and so what we're trying to do is read this tag as effectively as we can. Um, I'll point out that we have like these little uh, studs coming off of the ring that prevent us from getting too flush to it. Um, and in this design, um, you know, again, the tag is buried in that sort of acrylic material, but then we also have this gem, which is roughly uh, something of the order of like half a centimeter thick um, that, that sort of separates uh, the reader from reaching down um, into the tag. So I'll zoom in here so that you can see I have a setup with uh, the flow jack where uh, I've rigged a, a inlay or excuse me, an antenna that's roughly uh, 20 mil millimeters by eight millimeters <clears throat> which is the dimension that sort of matches uh, this tag size uh, as best as possible what I have over here on my right is a, a Rigold DSA 815 spectrum analyzer um, it's a spectrum analyzer that operates between uh, you know zero to roughly 1.5 uh, gigahertz uh, of, of bandwidth um, Currently, I have it uh, tuned to the 13.56 megahertz uh, band in which uh, near-field communication operates by the specification. 
Um, I've set it with a 10 megahertz of span. So I'll be seeing, uh, you know, activity around the 13.56 frequency, uh, you know, plus or minus uh, five megahertz on each side of it. Um, you know, here you see the marker in the middle is, is roughly 13.97. It's slightly to the right. Um, and what, what the spectrum analyzer does for us is it generates a wave through its output port, which is going into this uh, directional coupler. And uh, that ultimately feeds to the antenna. And then the reflected energy from that antenna, which is ultimately a short circuit for, uh, for, for all purposes, um, bounces back into the input port of the spectrum analyzer and gives us a measurement. And this measurement is a common one in antenna design and it's, it's basically a, re, a return loss measurement. The directional coupler prevents any of the energy coming from the output port uh, and, you know, and the, the uh, import of the antenna to be bounced back only to the coupled line. So that uh, functionality allows us to then catch everything that's bouncing back you know, into the input port. And then we know uh, verifiably that that's the amount of energy that's being lost at the antenna. Um, and so without getting into too much detail about antenna design, we'll just um, explain the simple behavior that we're looking for is one in which we see a dip in the energy uh, being measured. So as soon as I place this tag in the field, you start to see that dip. Now that uh, dip is a registered power measurement of how much power is being consumed by the coupling between this antenna and the inlay. And that, that is directly proportional to how much current goes into the reader for it to be able to exchange data with the tag. Do a min search. Right. And so that's given us roughly, you know, something of the order of like 15 dB of power loss, which ultimately is, is how well uh, the power is being exchanged between this antenna in this tag. And so 15 dB is, is incredibly uh, high, right? All we need to get uh, the flow jack or ACR35 to read a tag is roughly of the order of one or two to dB. So in order to, uh, again, get a read from the hardware, we need at least one dB. So, so if I was to put the NFC ring, um, in the, in the field here, uh, these, you know, these uh, different uh, lines on the grid are all 1 dB markings. So all I need is for the peak to drop below the first uh, marking in order for, for us to sort of get a read. And uh, you can see that it's, it's sort of not performing all that well unless I orient the tag in a real is rough let's see i could get it to just over 1 db like in specific sweet spots around the antenna but what's interesting is that if i curve so i'll press down on the antenna and i'm able to then achieve a consistent you know 1.87 db and that's because I'm forcing the antenna to flex to conform to the curvature of the NFC ring. Now, you know, if, if we were to sort of uh, look at these other tags, for instance, this, this tag that has, you know, a little over a half a centimeter of a, of a gem, you know, some sort of material right on top of the tag um, that ultimately serves to desensitize it. Let's see what, what our coupling is. And so here we're looking at roughly, let's see here.
curvature matters, right? Um, and so we'll straighten out the antenna, make it as straight as possible. And, uh, and we'll go about and, and test, um, test this ring. And so you can see that one has really good coupling, right? And so this is going to have for, you know, this is going to make for a great read experience where I could basically put that there and quickly get a read. So what we have here is now the antenna plugged into the flow jack. You know, the flow jack is, is turned on and plugged into the iPhone 5S. Um, and as soon as I place the tag in the field, we start to see, you know, pretty responsive reads, um, you know, registered here in the log window. If I use uh, this NFC ring with, with the curvature problem, you know, we, if we orient it right, we'll get some reads there. You know, I'll try the last, uh, or the, the NFC ring that's flat, but with the uh, gem preventing me from getting all the way onto the tag itself. And if I orient it right, um, you get pretty good reads there. And finally, uh, the best performing ring uh, overall is, is this one with the uh, no, no uh, gem stud in the way. Um, that I'm able to get a direct connection there. You see it just picks it up right away. Well, I hope you um, learned, you know, some of the moving, uh, some of the science, I should say, of, of designing uh, NFC hardware uh, and, and getting it to perform best with uh, the tags that you had in mind and the different... Uh, user experiences that you're uh, trying to achieve with your customers. Thanks for watching.